Hey everyone, uh, Andy here. Just wanted to remind you before we get started on this week's Deck Tech that Sean and I will be appearing live at Magic Fest Toronto, uh, which is just this week. So if you're watching uh, the podcast the week of February, like, Fourth, we'll be there uh, from the eighth to tenth. Uh, we're also going to be at GP LA coming up in March. That's March first to third, and then we'll be at uh, GP Niagara Falls on uh, April twentieth uh, that weekend. So uh, come out, say hey, let's play some Commander, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys there. But now on to the show. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for checking out uh, this week's Deck Tech. If you guys are liking the show and liking these Deck Techs, go down and hit subscribe, you know, ring that bell so you'll know every time uh, we make something new right here on YouTube. Uh, if you love us so much, I mean, go check out our uh, Patreon at patreon.com slash commandersbrew. You can actually help make the shows and make them better and get a couple uh, neat uh, perks while you're at it. Cards, uh, t-shirts, stuff like that. Okay, but without further ado, let's get into this week's Deck Tech. Sean, what have you brewed up for us this week? Ooh, this week uh, I was inspired to brew based on some new Simic treats we Ooh. got from uh, Ravnica Allegiance. Uh, but the commander I decided to put it all under is Tatiova Benthic Druid. Tatiova is a classic value commander. It's She takes advantage of the things we're going to do anyway. We're going to be playing cards. We're, go we're going to be playing lands. We're going to be drawing cards and gaining life. That's kind of the least important part, but I'll take it. I as well. always forget that she gains your life, also. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. Un unbelievable. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, under the watchful eye of Tatiova, uh, there's two, or, uh, or there's, there's, you know, things that we want to be doing with her, including uh, Land of War Scout type stuff, which is just a one or, one and a green for the one three that just puts a land into your hand, from your hand onto the battlefield. You know, we're drawing yep. a lot of cards. We're going to have a lot of land. So being able to get an extra one out every turn is great. Yeah, I want to highlight Harrow, too. That's another instant speed way to get two lands onto the battlefield, even though we only go up by one. Uh, but with Tatiova, that's an instant speed draw two, basically. That's sort of the way we're looking at this. And uh, this one, uh, this next one, is a bit of a mana sink, which is kind of like a little hint at what this deck is all about, uh, which is Simic Mana Sinks. Uh, uh, this one works great with Tatiova. It's Frontier Guide because it's it's a repeatable way to uh, basically like rampant growth, right? It costs four and a tap, but you're going to be able to uh, to do that, and then I'll also draw a card from it. So it just ups the value that Frontier Guide gives you. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, this is a Simic sort of Simic Mana Sink type of deck. So without further ado, let's get to our neat moves. <laughs> Working on a neat moves. Yeah. So the neat moves. Uh, I mean, why don't you start us off with this first one? This is very neat. Okay, so this is the neatest card in the deck. This is one of the Ravnica Allegiance cards I was referring to. This is Wilderness Reclamation. Uh, it untaps all your land on your end step. So already, this card, if you only use lands to pay for it, is quote-unquote free because you'll have all your lands back. But also, like, it enables us to use all of our activated abilities as mana sinks as well as just playing stuff at sorcery speed on our turn. So the, this card is the heart that makes this whole deck run. And we want to get this card out as soon as possible and as much as possible. So uh, both a way to get this card out uh, from your deck, as well as an excellent card that works with Reclamation, or sorry, Wilderness, Wilderness Reclamation, is Planar Bridge. Uh, yeah, Planar Bridge obviously is... The big artifact, legendary, you tap it and you go grab something from your library and put it onto the battlefield. Well, whether that's your wilderness reclamation to immediately then on tap your land, so it's kind of like you didn't even have to pay for it, uh, or it's just uh, being able to untap your lands after doing a big planar bridge in the middle of your turn, and then now you've got some mana up for instant speed, or even vice versa. I mean, it just works so well, even though it taps, and we're not being we're not really able to like get multiple uses of it. It's still very much worth it, and very very good with with this suite of cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also want to like like with wilderness reclamation. I didn't point this out earlier, but we can sneak extra mana during our end step. So if we only have six lands out. We can tap the as many as we have put in our mana pool. The trigger of Wilderness Reclamation untaps them all, and we can re-put them in our, the same end step. It will empty, but if we want to use more than the lands we have during our end step, we can do that with Wilderness Reclamation. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. 
So, uh, so here's the other card from Ravnica Allegiance that I'm very excited about. Biomancer is familiar. Uh, it reduces activated abilities of creatures by two. Can't go less than one, so it can't enable like broken infinite zero mana combos. Mm -hmm. But reducing <coughs> activated abilities by two, as we'll see, brings a lot of them from like fine. It's like, yeah, I'm fine paying for this, but it brings it into the level of like very excellent. It's like, oh, mm. now I'm I'm excited for this ability when it <laughs> costs two less. Yes. <laughs> the tier of very excellent. <laughs> yeah, very excellent. So it goes like this. Excellent is the worst. Very excellent. <laughs> The lowest Super is excellent. excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a marketing trick. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like venti, large. Um, yeah, excellent, very excellent, supreme, and supremioso. <laughs> supremioso is the best. Uh, <laughs> well, no, the best is the best. Supremioso. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a level above that. Yes. Uh, yeah, Brian Mason Familiar is so strong in this deck, and you're going to see just all the different options that you're going to get with it and uh, um, how it's going to... Uh, drop down those costs. But uh, before we do that, actually, Mirage Mirror is a great one to team up with Biomancer's Familiar. It's still going to cost the two, uh, but uh, you can change it into a, Bioma a Biomancer's Familiar to then get your further uh, creature uh, activated abilities reduced by even more so, right? So you pay that initial two, yes, but then you're going to be able to uh, activate, you know, a lot of these creatures more than once on that same turn. Yeah. Uh, this so this won't work with Biomancer's Familiar, but I love Sooth saying in the deck. Uh, it's just a one mana. It's it costs a single blue enchantment, but the ability to look at the top X cards of your library and put them back in any order. I'm gonna remind us of the example where it's like, let's say we've got some lands, and we're like, ah, oh, I don't got much going on. I can tap out during my end step, untap, tap out again, and maybe look at the next twenty cards of my library, put them in any order I want, and just be like, yeah, I can just ensure that i have all the best stuff for the upcoming parts of this game just make sure you don't crack in evolving wilds after you do that no don't do it <laughs> and also keep in mind that as you play lands with tetiova you're going to be drawing cards as well yeah so like you gotta time it yeah yeah that's true yeah yeah uh and another great one here uh is eva nature's herald uh she's going to give all of her green creatures flash which is and she has flash herself so it's always nice to be able to uh, take that mana that we've untapped with our Wilderness Reclamation and that we're holding up to actually turn into creatures, which is usually what we... Like, usually I think standard, you just want to, like, play your creatures out on your turn, then untap your lands, and then hold up some instants or some instant speed abilities, right? Uh, but this just allows you to have the world, right? You can do it all. And um, even if she gets removed, just flashing in those creatures at, like, before she gets removed is a real option as well. Yeah, and so Yeva also lets us hold up tons of mana so counter spells kind of go up in value a little bit and i want to highlight deprive it's like the classic blue blue counter spell with a drawback of putting a land into your owner's hand into its owner's hand like one of your lands into its owner's hand which is you uh but that's the thing with tetiova we don't mind so much right if we've got a land war scout out we'll just drop it back on the battlefield right away so it's kind of not a drawback it's actually a bit of a bonus in this deck yeah, deprive is actually quite quite good. It's gonna it's yeah draws you a card a bit later, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, another great one is Garrick's Horde five uh, and two green. So this is a seven mana seven seven with trample, but it lets you uh, look at that top card of your library, and if it's a creature, you can play it off the top. So it extends your hand to the top of your library, which is even better than it sounds because then you you just have if you play that creature, you just get access to the next one and the next one, next one, and so on. So um, obviously, uh, untapping lands and getting a lot of uh, of uh, of mana and and being able to maybe even with Eva you know do this at instant speed is just bonkers. So uh, being able to just extend the hand in uh, is is always a good thing. And and uh, you know a seven seven trampler is not bad either. That's going to do some damage. No no, and I must point out how it interacts with Tatiova too because playing a land draws us a card, so we're able to like change what's on top of our library fairly easily. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I want to talk about, so we have a whole suite of uh, creatures that use level up because hopefully if we have a wilderness reclamation or we have bio Manchester familiar or ideally both, we get to level these creatures up on our main phase, which is how you have to level up. But then we get to hold up the mana anyway. That's always been the problem with level up creatures. If you could level up at instant speed, they might have been too good, but that's where I want them to live. But they sort of do live that way in this deck. So, yeah. for example, Kazendu Tuskcaller, we can get up to its level six and then be able to crank out 
a couple beasts a turn. Even if we only get it to level two, like one beast a turn is not nothing. So I'm happy to do that. I mean, that. it's an elephant, but you can call an elephant I'm a beast sorry. If you want. It's it is not sort of a beast. technically a beast, but yeah. Yes, it is technically an elephant. It is not a beast. <laughs> Cards that look at beasts do not recognize elephants. No, they don't. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, this is a level up shines in this deck more so than it ever did. Yeah, and Tusk Collar is a, is a strong one uh, for sure. Uh, the next couple cards uh, we have here are all about card draw. And uh, my favorite one is the first one here, Kefnet the Mindful. Uh, Kefnet is really good in this deck because uh obviously you want to have a full hand with kefnet to be able to, to attack and block and stuff but it's activated ability which we can reduce the cost of is so good with tatiova because we can draw a card bounce that land to our hand and then just play the land again to draw another card uh either way it, it ups our hand size for kefnet to be able to uh, be a surprise blocker, or, I mean, it's not really a surprise because your opponent can actually see Cummings on board, but, uh, you know, to, to turn into a blocker when it wasn't before, and then also obviously get in for five damage if you wanted to. I think Kefnet is very well suited in this deck. And then we also have uh, the River Hoopoo, uh, as well as Azure Mage, each uh, of which have activated abilities that will draw us a card. Uh, in River Hoopoo's case, also gain us a little life. Uh, you know, and we're reducing that cost with our Biomancer's Familiar, so it becomes very easy and a great mana sink uh, if you got nothing else to do with it. Yeah, uh, and then one one other card with a nice repeatable activated ability is Elder of Laurels. Uh, paying four for this ability is probably fair, but we're hoping to get a reduction from uh, our Biomancer's Familiar, etc. And yeah. Once you can pay two for this, or possibly just a single green, this becomes a scary ability, uh, and you're it must be dealt with. Like your opponents, ha like this, this is a kill on board most likely. Like they, they, there, there's not a, you can swing with everybody, and someone will get through, and you'll make them like a plus ten, plus ten times five. Yeah, and God forbid you get it on one of your tramplers or, or one of the flyers Ooh. or something. Well, then you only need to have with one, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, those are the neat moves. Are there any surprises or discoveries for this deck? So an overall surprise and discovery was that there aren't that many unique activated abilities that are, like, extra special and broken. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like, the game does what the game does. Mm -hmm. But green and blue, we're talking about tokens, some sort of pump, moving tokens, or drawing cards for the most part. Uh, I mean, there's like little subtle variations on how all those effects work, but I couldn't really find any repeatable activated abilities that really were able to be broken with Biomancer's Familiar. Hmm. I guess that makes sense because. Yeah, because the ones, about. yeah, the ones that you can repeat there, I think they're pretty like, they're pretty cagey on. They don't want you to be able to, you know, abuse it in, uh, in other formats, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, but you did have one card that was a surprise and or discovery. Yes, highly controversial. Uh, I think it's a... So, Halibar Wave Watch, one in a blue, level up. It's, so, the level, level up creatures are overall not that great in our format. They're just not great by how they work because it requires us to mostly tap out at instant speed... At sorcery speed, I mean. But in a deck where you're getting all your mana back at the end of your turn, I think the level up goes up. The level up ability becomes much better. And... In that instance, I think a, being able to get this to a 6-6 six, six Island Walk, that's a formidable enough creature that I, I think it's worth an include in the deck. And, uh, I mean, if you listen to the audio show, we go into more depth about this, but uh, I don't think it is. I think uh, a 6-6 six, six Island Walk for, you know, roughly, I mean, it's seven mana, but it's over a couple, it's over turns. Like, you don't have to do it right away. It's, a, it's an investment. But even still, I, I still feel like, either you just would play a card that this that this big and evasive or it's not really worth it and you probably want something that just does more in the deck like it's not worth the card slot to me anyways but you know that's up for debate let us know what you think about it is halimar wave watch uh is you think how, how do you think it's going to function in this deck let us know uh all right but now it is time for the budget report <laughs> We're going to take all the cards and we're going to knock off two or four bucks and see. <laughs> just We're just going to have a huge sale. Huge sale. <laughs> it's, it's just, good. It's just uh, generally They're a all sale. worth putting in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this overall deck, as it stands, is 121 bucks. And the most expensive card is Training Grounds, mm. which is sort of... this is. I knew this card existed. I didn't realize it was $17. That's very high. But it's kind of the coolest feature of the deck. 
So it's a tough cut for me. I don't know. This would take it to about a hundred bucks if you drop this cut this card. It's a hard cut though. I don't know. I want to leave yeah, it. Yeah, it's one of those things where it did spike because of it spiked just before Amaket. So like I think uh, I saw on the internet uh, Scarab God maybe it, and it is only Commander that's making this card expensive, which is crazy. It seems like it. Yeah. Uh, training grounds, but yeah, that's a tough. That is a tough one to cut. I mean, it's the exact thing you want to do in the deck. Uh, not unlike Thrasios, Triton Hero is also another main thing you want to do in this deck. This is. Thrasios like was well known for having one of the best activated abilities, especially when you can generate lots of mana, uh, so you can just do it over and over again. I mean, we're putting you're putting a land onto the battlefield. You're scrying one. You're putting a land on the battlefield if you find it. That's usually like if that's just at the beginning of the game. Later, you're probably wanting to scry to find something. But Tatiova is totally fine with either side because you're going to draw a card if you get that land out there either way. So it's like yeah. that's almost the preferred <laughs> version of it. It's it's. It, Thrasios is look. There's a reason Thrasios is sixteen dollars. He's very very good, and Simic makes so much mana. So it, you know it only makes sense that we would put him in here and him have probably be one of the best cards in the deck. Yeah. Uh. So those are tough cuts, but I mean, if you want to, that would drop the deck to like ninety bucks. Uh. The next most expensive card is Nylea, God of the Hunt. Uh. Nylea does two important things that this deck wants to do. Uh. She gives all your other tre- creatures trample, and she has an activated ability that we can use multiple times to give a creature plus two plus two till end of term. So that together, if we can make that cheaper, or if we've got Elder of Laurels or any other way to pump, we can just make any little ability dork, a dork with an ability, a lethal attacker. Yeah, that's a nice little, that's a nice little combination. Yeah. Uh, uh, favorite cards. Okay, Andy, what's your favorite card? My favorite card is Shaman of the Forgotten Ways. Two and a green uh, for the 2-3, it adds mana, so it's a bit of a mana dork. Uh, it adds two mana, actually, of any color, for, but only for creature spells. So good early, and then good late, because you can pay 11. <laughs> but again, we can make that we can make that a bit less. But at, the, at this point, it kind of doesn't matter, because it's it's basically biorhythm. So it, it, it makes everyone's life total be the number of creatures they have. So you can you get to pick when this happens. You get to pick the you know the most opportune moment for this to happen. You can have the counter spell that also protects you, or you can have another spell that like makes sure someone dies. This can be the thing that kills some players straight up, makes their life total zero. Uh, this can also be the thing that just brings them within range, so that your now tramplers can get in and kill things. Shaman of the Forgotten Ways is a it's it's a, such a unique ability that biorhythm again is banned. So like. You know it's powerful, uh, so I think it's 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 fun to have this card available to us, and I think it's actually pretty well suited in this deck. Yeah, yeah, fun fun pick. My pick is Multani Yavimai's Avatar. I just love this card. Uh, the ability to return it from the graveyard is great. The cost of that by returning lands to your hand is only a benefit for Tetiova. Yeah, maybe it hold, puts us back a little bit, but with Wilderness Reclamation, we're able to utilize so much mana that I think it's fine and. You know, don't knock the reach. Like, reach and trample. It's a fantastic combination. I agree, yeah. Reach is an underrated part of Multani, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If not yeah. straight up forgotten about a lot. If, if, if I our, know! If Magic Arena is any evidence, uh, it is definitely forgotten about quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, well, oh, your ground is huge. You got that 9-9 nine, nine on the ground, so I'll just stick with my 3-3 three, three flyer. It's like, <laughs> yeah. block, eat. Yeah, sorry, I oh, just dear. ate that thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, that's it, though. That's the deck. What This is a real fun one. I, You know me, I'm a, I love Simic, and I just... I love this combination of things that we're doing. Yeah, this is definitely a deck that needs some time to get rolling, but the momentum just continues to build. Tetiova gets us started. Biomancer's Familiar makes us go even faster. Our mana sinks. We're taking advantage of those. And it all, like, we're drawing more cards, so we're finding our training grounds. And we're just, it's just, it just, you can't, this momentum must be stopped or it will run you over. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's so true for so many green decks. Uh, this one, uh, definitely included. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I mean, uh, let us know if you want to put this deck together. If you've got any other ideas for neat moves that we forgot about, please let us know in the comments. We love hearing about neat moves. Oh, love uh, it. Yeah, love it. And then, you know, if you got a second, uh, check us, check our website out, commandersbrew.com. And all the rest of the stuff, uh, we're going to say it right now after the the little pre-recorded thing that we say after. Uh, so don't worry about it. But uh, yeah, man, uh, hopefully you hit subscribe on this video and love it so much. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Big thanks to all our patrons who make these episodes possible. Yeah, and if you want to check out more comedy videos, check out our Bruise News playlist. 
Make sure you follow us on Twitch TV to see when we play live. If you want to chat with us, head over to Twitter. We're at Commander's Brew. And please hit subscribe to Ding the Bell and find out when we got new stuff coming out. See you next time. Bye.